Okay, everyone, today I'm going to be risking my life doing the most dangerous physics experiment in hopes that the conservation of momentum is true. I have here a very sharp six pound steel wedge. <laughs> this wedge is not messing around. Okay, so the experiment goes like this. So first I'm going to let my wife have at me by trying to pound it into my chest and then I'm going to put it against my forehead and see what happens when I hit it. So the question is, why would I allow somebody to pound this into my chest? Well, it has to do with momentum. There's an important law in physics called the conservation of momentum. And it goes like this, momentum is mass times velocity. And the momentum of a system is always conserved, meaning it always stays the same. So here's what I mean by conservation of momentum. For example, I have here two steel balls. They're exactly the same weight and diameter. So what I'm saying is that the momentum of this system always has to stay the same. So if I have one ball sitting here and I decide to move this ball with a specific velocity, it means that if this ball stops, the other one has to start moving with exactly the same velocity because they're the same mass. And this is basically how a Newton's cradle works. When it has the balls that are hanging there and they get knocked back and forth and back and forth and the end balls get knocked off and the middle ones just stay there, that's because they're just transferring the momentum through each other. So when masses are not equal, in order for momentum to be conserved, the velocity has to change. When there's a huge mismatch in masses, that means that the velocities can be wildly different. This is easily seen in what's called the stacked ball experiment. So in the stacked ball experiment, what you do is you have one ball and you stack another ball on top of it. And because the masses are so different, when the bigger ball hits the ground, it transfers its momentum to the smaller ball. But because the smaller ball has a much lower mass, that means in order for momentum to be conserved, the velocity has to be much greater than the bigger ball. So basically what that means is that for a small bounce with a bigger ball, it means a huge bounce for the smaller ball. Okay, so to show you what I mean, first I'm going to be dropping two balls, one stacked on top of the other, and watch what happens to the top ball. And then after that, if I have enough patience, I'm going to be trying to stack three balls on top of each other and seeing what happens. And because height is proportional to velocity squared, that means that this small ball should go around nine times of the original drop height. And then if you do the same thing with three balls, the maximum obtainable height is around 49 times the original drop height. But 49 times is the maximum obtainable height if you were to get everything perfect. And I clearly did not do that. So here's the three level stacked ball drop. So now that we know that when something with a small mass hits something with a larger mass, in order to conserve momentum, the velocity has to decrease. And I'm betting on that to show you that when my wife hits me as hard as she can with this small hammer, I shouldn't feel much of an impact because this weighs six pounds compared to this, which is less than a pound. Okay, get ready. Okay, go. <laughs> I don't feel anything. Nothing. So it's pretty cool. Because of this large mass, you don't really get a huge change in velocity. Even when you're hitting it against something that has a hard background, like your head or something. So you can see that when you have something with a smaller mass hitting something with a larger mass, the momentum overall is small, so you can't do much with it. But if I were to reverse the rolls and hit something with a large mass with a large velocity, then it easily transfers a lot of momentum to the smaller mass. So I definitely wouldn't want to be holding this against my chest. And I'd like to thank Audible for sponsoring this video. If you go to audible.com slash action lab or text action lab to 500 500, 
you can get a free 30-day trial. Or if you're an Amazon Prime member, you can get three months for only $4.95 a month. That's like getting three months for the price of one. Right now on Audible, I'm currently listening to my favorite book, Ender's Game. So what I like about Audible with my busy schedule, I can listen to a book anytime I have my phone. And it's really nice because Audible is an Amazon company, so it just links with your Amazon account and it has an app for it and it knows where you left off. And my wife really likes it syncs with the Kindle. And so wherever you left off reading on your Kindle, it'll start there on your Audible app. And so it's really cool. It keeps all the places saved and everything. So whether you're reading it or listening to it, it keeps that place saved. And thanks everybody for watching another episode of The Action Lab. If you're not subscribed yet, remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video's out. And head over to theactionlab.com if you haven't subscribed to my subscription box yet where you can do your own experiments like you see me do on my channel. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.